Well, we are back with a personal story on the Adam Perola Show. This is one I don't think I've ever told on this show or any other show. Crime Stopper. Been involved with a couple of uh, crimes in my day. Sometimes uh, committing the crime, other times thwarting the crime, or at least attempting to. This is a very satisfying story. We um, actually, um, well, one time... I'll tell my purse snatcher story another day, but uh, this has to do with graffiti. I personally hate graffiti. I I like a prank as much as the next guy. And I really do um, make the distinction between those who are trying to screw around and have a good time and those who actually hurt people and do things that are malicious. Got into a little argument with my wife last night. We're watching the news. The woman... There was a story a couple of weeks ago where a, an employee of a supermarket was in charge, I guess, of putting the flag up on a flagpole, undid the rope, and a shopping cart landed on her head. You guys remember this story? Mm -hmm. It was about a, two weeks ago. The woman had her skull crush, her neck. She's in one of those halo things now, whatever. And my wife was outraged, like, well, what kind of animal would do that? And I said, that's something me and Ray would have done, taken a shopping, shopping cart and pulled it up a flagpole. We used to do it to people. Take the flagpole clips out front of the school, clip it on the belt buckle on the tough skin, and raise the kid right up the oh, top man. of the flagpole. Well, that's, you know, listen, flagpoles were made for, you know, flying flags, but they're also made for flagpole sitting. You know what I mean? Look, whoever did the first flagpole sitting now opened up the gates to people screwing around with flagpoles. I blame that guy, the guy from the 20s who sat on the flagpole. That used to be an actual sport. L listen, kids, with your video games, you don't know how bad your forefathers had it. For entertainment, they would sit on a flagpole. <laughs> and then the guys would stand under him. How long has he been up there? 22 hours. Fantastic. I'm going back in the house. That's all the entertainment they had back then. So somebody took a shopping cart, clipped those little flag clip things on there. Here's the thing, too. Does a flagpole and those clips need to hold several thousand pounds? You know, I'd do breakaway flagpole clips if I was manufacturing these things. So what's a flag weigh? 22 ounces? Five ounces, six ounces. Oh, there's a little wind factor, but when it, when, you shouldn't be able to lift a small car up with these things. They should just break away. It's a safety thing. No yeah, the more... nerds are the inventors of our society. You think they would save themselves right. by doing that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they should have known that they would be hoisted up. Mm -hmm. That's right. You can't lift more. You can only lift old glory and third graders. Anything above a third grader is not going to get. And with the morbid obesity of today's nerds living in this country, you couldn't even lift a guy from kindergarten. But the point is, is they lifted... A shopping cart. I guess the woman was going out to put the flag up, undid the thing, and the shopping cart landed on her head. My wife was outraged. I said, look, the people that did this meant no malice. They were screwing around, and it ended up in tragedy. This is different than the guys who go up on the freeway overpass and throw cinder blocks down at cars that are driving underneath. It's one thing when you chuck a water balloon at the car, the, guitar, the, the car goes out of control, and somebody's hurt as opposed to pulling someone out of the car and throwing a rock at their head. That's different. One, you meant to do harm. The other, you're trying to screw around, and it went awry. I don't blame the people that were trying to screw around. We do as a society. But I understand the difference between the person who meant malice and the person that was screwing around and somebody got hurt. This was not that. This was just good old-fashioned graffiti. And uh, it's not done as a joke, and it's not done for any other reason but to deface property. We were living in... In an apartment over in North Hollywood, the apartment had an alley running down the back of it. The further you can live away from an alley, the better. There's nothing good that goes on in an alley. Even when nothing is going on in an alley, it's bad. People dump stuff in alleys. They dump their sofas and their old used motor oil. I used to hang around in this alley because that's where the garage was for our apartment. It was apartments over here and garages over here in the alley. And I'd hang out working on my car all night long and weirdos would come up and down the alley not dangerous weirdos just weirdos one guy alcoholic he was a quick draw champion six shooters at least that's what he told me he was a fast draw champion and he used to come down the alley and when you're working on your car and you're in an alley everyone just stops and hangs out they come walking by the garage. What year was this, 1872? <laughs> yeah. No, it was uh, eh, 86, 85, something quick like draw that. Champ. It's a quick draw champ. 
just like the guys, I guess they still do rodeos nowadays. Well, it was a quick draw champ. So he used to come up and down the alley all the time, hang out. He'd be drunk, and he'd stand in the garage. And he'd, I'd talk to him while I was bent over in the hood, and he would just keep talking about doing his quick drawing and all that kind of stuff. One day he showed up with two forearm casts. Two. Exactly the same on each forearm. So you broke both your hands, both your wrists. Yep, thrown off a horse. So I'm guessing his quick drawing days were uh, over, at least his, at least dashed or put on hold for a few months until those casts came off his arms. But there was always a, a, a steady stream of alcoholic weirdos used to come up and down the alley while I hung out and worked in my car. And they knew who I was, and I knew who they were, and we'd hang out and talk a little bit. It was desperate times back then. Anyway... Uh, one morning, one Sunday morning, we got up. This would be me in the wheeze, probably my buddy Chris. We're all living in the one bedroom, headed out to uh, go out to the car. And uh, there was graffiti all over my garage door and all over the alley, but most importantly, all over my garage door. Now, most people don't have uh, this this feeling of pride about their apartment. But for us, it was more justice. I didn't really care about the garage door. I just didn't like my alley. got all graffitied up. And I said, uh, what does this thing say? It said Egbert. That was it. Wasn't wasn't a, wasn't a street, wasn't a number, wasn't a gang stuff. It just said Egbert all up and down the alley. And I said, what the hell is this Egbert? Now, we knew a lot of troublemakers from the neighborhood, and we knew this person was from the neighborhood, and we knew it wasn't them, some Chicano gangbanger or the Crips or the Bloods or something. Egbert, what is that? So we went out and searched for for answers. Now, my buddy Todd, although uh, he was known as Snake, Snake said uh, there's a guy named Toad. And this guy Toad, <laughs> he's the angel, uh, you know, of the Rockford Files of the neighborhood. This guy knows what's going on. He'll know who this egg bird is. We'll go get Toad. We'll shake down Toad. We'll get some answers out of Toad, and we'll get to the bottom of egg bird. So we all piled in the car, and we started driving, looking for Toad. <laughs> My buddy Snake knew where Toad lived. That's really, it's a menagerie at this point. It's confusing. You snake got toad, and Toad. Snake, snake, snake Toad. You got wheeze. the wheeze. You got a chimpanzee of a friend named Ray. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so we uh, we all hopped into one car and we started going and looking for Toad. And it was like a movie. You know, you realize, like we are talking about in the past, in, in your life, there are things that seem to take forever to work out. There's those times when you head out for a very simple task. I'm going to go get a duplicate key made to my front door. And 22 hours later, you come home exhausted without the duplicate key and your hair messed up. There are certain things that take a long time for one reason or another. They just don't seem to work out. And then there are those things that work out almost immediately. We hopped in our car to go in search of Toad. We drove about 100 feet when another car was passing by us on a small street. And my buddy Snake yelled, there goes Toad. He drove right past us. We, we we got 100 feet from my apartment. There was, for some reason, Toad. I didn't even know where he lived. Snake sort of knew where he lived. We are just going to go out scouting. He drove right past us. Snake did one of those things where he, you know, whipped the car around, got behind him. Toad got nervous. Toad knew he was being tailed. You don't tail <laughs> Toad. Toad knew there was four scary guys that were in a car that were tailing him, and he was nervous. It was just him and his buddy. I'm not sure what animal name he had. <laughs> Chipmunk. Don't know what his name was, but they were driving around. <laughs> Eventually, then he wouldn't pull over. You know, Snake was doing the pull over thing. Toad was frightened. <laughs> Toad knew something. Didn't want to be shaken down. This is I what, guess so. This is uh, <laughs> the same thing that the, the stoolies, the informants do. The guys who drop dimes are cowards. You know, they'll talk, but you got to corner them first. They, uh, they take off. And he took off. And then another funny thing, and eventually we wove our way onto Ventura Boulevard where a cop car got next to us. And he drove next to us for like 22 signals. So we couldn't do anything. Toad wouldn't do anything. Eventually, Snake pulled up next to Toad, and he screamed, you either pull over now and we talk, or I will find you and I will kill you. <laughs> Which was a good angle, because this guy thought we could talk it out here, or I'm going to have to keep looking over my shoulder everywhere I go. Two weeks from now, I'm going to be at a party looking around, seeing if Snake and company are in there trying to kill me. So Toad pulled over, and we said to Toad, Who's Egbert? And, uh, you know, he looked down and he didn't want to say anything, but we knew he knew something. And he uh, he dropped a name. I think he dropped the last name. He said Besner. I said, uh, 
I know that name. I think I know that guy's older brother. As a matter of fact, I know where that guy lives. And we all piled into the car, and we headed over to the Besner residence. And we walked up to the front door, and it was still the morning. And we rang the doorbell, and the mom answered. And we said, uh, you know, we have reason to believe that uh, your son was doing some graffiti last night. And she said, uh, come on in. And we all piled in the living room. We sat down. And the poor kid had just woken up. He was in the shower. He'd have gone out and graffitied in the wee hours of that <laughs> night. So he's out doing his graffiti work at 2 in the morning on a Saturday night. And now Sunday morning, there's a group of strangers sitting in his living room. He didn't graffiti. No one saw him graffiti. He didn't put his name on anything. He didn't put his address or his home phone on anything. He just went out and graffitied a random alley. And eight hours later, there's a group of people sitting in his living room. <laughs> so she said, let me go get him. And she went and, go, went and got the guy. And the guy's name was Greg Besner. Thus, Egbert, for some reason. That was his nickname. I hope he's listening now because he's now 40 years old and probably working in the corporate world. But his mom called him in and his dad was standing there and uh, they wanted to know what the F was going on. And they just confronted him. He just like he literally came out drying his head with a towel into this living room because she just said, uh, Greg, come in here. Got some people want to talk to you. And he's like, OK, mom. And he comes walking in and there's all these scary people standing there. And they just looked at him. And he said, did you go out in graffiti last night? And he was like. Oh, uh, yes, <laughs> that was it. <laughs> and the dad started going nuts on him, which was fun. Egg bird, big head. You know, it was one of those dumb dad things where he couldn't come up with anything good, but he thought it was good enough and no one was going to tell him that was stupid or not funny at the time. <laughs> so uh, then, the, then the mom started putting it together. You know, we bought some spray paint. It was missing. <laughs> oh, no. I was looking for them, you know, and this is what. And the dad was just going off. This is what you do. This is what I raised. This it was great, Dad, laying in on. Well, he had to apologize to uh, everybody. <laughs> he had to apologize to the people that, for their fun, string nerds up on flagpoles and put poop in each other's ears. <laughs> yes. Let me tell you something. The poop in the air thing, that was m many months before this. Plus, you About can wash months. poop away. That's right. Paint, you have to paint over. That's right. A little soap and water will get rid of the poop. <laughs> Unless it dries. Did you make this Mr. Besner paint over your garage? He was ordered to paint the entire alley <laughs> by his angry dad. Egg, <laughs> egg bird, egg, egg, head, egg head, I say. <laughs> Stupid head, egg head. <laughs> dads. He was scrambled. Yeah, Thank dads, you. you know, I feel like dads, especially dads that don't have a decent sense of humor, ought to wear one of those uh, quarterback wristband things that have some funny insults or plays. You know, <laughs> daughter stays out too late past curfew. Here's what you say. Son graffiti. Son gets suspended. Because I feel like they're always a mess. Big. You know, when white guys from the corporate world try to come up with something on the spot. Egg. Egg head. <laughs> Come up then. He just kept saying, hey, Gad. I was like, I thought that means smart. Doesn't that mean smart? I didn't want to. Yeah, it does. He was, I... he was on a roll, though. I didn't want to interrupt him. But he was yelling at his poor son. Mom was crying. Justice had been served. He'd apologized. And uh, the following day, he had painted the entire alley. Now, could this ever be traced back to Toad, who gave him up? Hmm. I don't know if he ever had an issue with Toad or spoke to Toad about it. But it was very satisfying that... About an hour after we set out for justice to find who had done the graffiti, the random person that had done graffiti that none of us saw the night before, less than an hour later, we're sitting in the person's living room confronting him. <laughs> Rarely works out that way. You say justice, I say tattletale. That's right, Stooley. <laughs> well, there is my uh, lovely That's your story. Nickname, Stooley Pace. Stool ear. <laughs>